Lego just officially revealed the long-awaited X-Men Mansion set, and boy am I excited. With 3,093 pieces and 10 minifigures, it will sell for $330 in the U.S. starting on November 1st. The mansion itself is based off the version from the X-Men animated series and has some beautiful and intricate details. But let's start out by taking a look at the minifigures before we get into the details of the mansion. Starting off, we have Professor X in his classic hover chair, in a clean looking blue suit. The face of this minifigure is pretty simple, but works well for Professor X. However, I have to say that I'm pretty disappointed with this suit, in that it doesn't match his typical green outfit from the animated series. Instead, it looks like it maybe better matches live-action versions of Professor X and Sir Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy. And for this reason, I have to give him a 6 out of 10. The Magneto minifigure is similar to the original Magneto figure, released in 2012, but has a few cool updates like this new rubber cape in purple and an updated torso print with a purple belt around the waist. He uses his signature red and purple helmet that we've seen in three X-Men sets, although not since the Mighty Micro Magneto released in 2017. For me, this minifigure is a solid 9 out of 10. Next up, we have Cyclops, who is mostly the same minifigure from the X-Jet, but with updated leg printing. I'm super glad they gave us leg printing here, and it looks pretty good, but I really think they missed out on the opportunity to give us some better looking yellow boots with dual molded yellow and blue legs. For now, I'm kind of going back and forth on whether I will keep my version of Cyclops with the blue and yellow legs from the Beach Boy minifigure. 7 out of 10. As one of the primary characters throughout nearly every iteration of the X-Men, Jean Grey is a very welcome addition to the LEGO minifigure collection. I think her torso is basically perfect for her iconic look, but I would have loved to see some more printing on the rest of her, including her arm printing, and maybe even a bit of leg printing, though that's a bit nitpicky, so I'll give it a pass. It also would have been nice to see a new hair piece from her with a slightly different style of ponytail, but this piece works well enough for me. This figure I give an 8 out of 10. Perfect torso. Gambit is a cool looking minifigure with an awesome torso print that has his signature blue and pink outfit with his muscular build and a face print with red eyes. He also makes use of a custom Power Blast piece that makes it possible for him to launch his signature playing cards at enemies, which I do love. Unfortunately, I'm sure the face print will be a little lighter than a typical flesh head since it's printed on top of black, and for me the hair is not the best fit for Gambit. I would have preferred that they use a new hair piece, or maybe even a different existing hair piece, like the one I used on my custom Gambit figure, although not perfect. I also don't really like the way the dark tan legs work on this figure as he is completely missing his boots. Again, it would have been really great to get dual molded legs that better capture this look. And maybe even a new cloth piece or rubber piece that would capture a trench coat for characters like him or Jubilee. I have to give Gambit a 6.5 out of 10. The Storm minifigure uses the same torso as the collectible minifigure version of her and comes with an updated cape with yellow trim that I think looks fantastic. She has a new headpiece with some cool electricity highlights that I really love, and the recolor of this hairpiece in white is perfect for her. The one complaint I have on this figure is that they really should have included the printed legs from the CMF minifigure that they already have the design for. Simple enough to change out, but for $330, we shouldn't have to. Overall, I give the figure 8 out of 10. Rogue is the same figure from the recent X-Jet set and still has the same flaws with her yellow torso printing getting a bit washed out compared to the legs. It's even vi visible in their promotional pictures. Overall, a pretty good figure, though I'm still not completely sold on this hairpiece for Rogue. Definitely the best we have, but would have been cool to see an update. I give her a 7 out of 10. Wolverine is the same figure from the recent X-Jet set. The collectible minifigure version had crisper yellow leg printing that matched the torso better. At this point, this Wolverine figure is basically a throwaway slot that would have been better served with a character like Jubilee or Nightcrawler. 4 out of 10. 
Iceman is a nice looking minifigure that actually matches the TV animated version of the character quite well. I think it would have been really fun to see some more transparent minifigure parts on him to make him more ice-like, but I do have to admit the source material is pretty much solid white just like the figure. I must say his inclusion over more common characters is interesting since he is rarely featured in the classic X-Men animated series, but I give this figure a 7 out of 10. The Bishop minifigure in the set doesn't work too well for me. I really like the printing on his torso and legs, but I think the regular shade of blue would have worked a lot better than the dark blue they ended up using on his costume. Just comparing him to Cyclops, I think they would have been pretty well served to be that same color of blue. That said, again, his costume printing is actually really good, and I think they nailed the print on his head, though I'm not completely sold on his hair. I'll, I'll give him a 5 out of 10. Overall, the Sentinel looks very nice for the scale of this set. Some of the shaping on the figure looks a little bit off, like the curves and angles on his boots, for example. But overall, at this scale, I think this is a solid Sentinel build that looks like it'll play quite well with LEGO minifigures. In the future, I would love to see LEGO make a dedicated Sentinel set that would maybe be somewhere between the scale of this Sentinel and the UCS Hulkbuster that would really give the Sentinel a bit more of an imposing feeling. For the Sentinel, I give it 6 out of 10. One complaint I do have after looking at all of the characters in this is the, that the set is really missing Jubilee. She's one of the classic X-Men that has been around in nearly every episode of the animated TV series, and it really hurts to see that she is missing in favor of some of the characters we get here. Also, as a personal favorite, I would have loved to see Nightcrawler, although he's not quite as common. He's still more common than characters like Iceman. And now for the mansion. The mansion is made up of six modular sections or rooms with accompanying removable roofs. The way that this is set up so that the modules can come apart and you can easily see what is going on inside of each room is perfectly executed. I love the color combination used on the mansion with the dark orange brick walls, the blue roof, and the gray stone detailing used for the foundation and the structure of the building. The outside of the mansion has some white pillars around the entrance holding up a small balcony in the center. The detailing on the front of the roof makes use of some unique parts for its decorative elements like the light bluish gray hot dogs on either side of the mansion and these light bluish gray vine pieces used in the center. The top central portion of the roof captures the large white domed overlook very well with lots of round parts used along with these fence pieces for the small pillars around the dome. Moving around to the back side of the mansion, I must say I really don't like that they left the exterior of one of the sides completely gray. This corresponds with where the danger room is inside of the mansion, but looks super wonky when seen from the outside. The back of the mansion also includes a poster of Nightcrawler, who again would have been cool to see in this set. Perhaps this is a hint that we will be getting a Nightcrawler. And it also includes a dumpster, a basketball hoop, and a few other small details. The central main lobby as you enter the mansion has some cool details like the elevator shaft. I'm not sure that the elevator is working, but it would be cool if it is. It doesn't look big enough to me that it would be, but we'll see when we get the set. You also have Cerebro, where Professor X is able to amplify his telepathic abilities. It would have been cool to see a custom helmet for this, but what they did works okay. Moving on to some other rooms in the mansion, there is the Danger Room, where the X-Men practice their powers in a more safe environment. Looks like some pretty cool stuff going on here, although it's pretty crammed when you consider how large the Danger Room typically is for this set. In another room, it looks like they have a small classroom with a few desks and a whiteboard. Looks like a TV as well where maybe Beast is teaching a lesson. And one of my favorite things here is that they have Wolverine's room. It's got a classic comic book, but more importantly, it has the classic meme of Wolverine on his bed looking at a picture of Jean Grey and Cyclops. Super funny here, and I'm so glad they included that. Overall, I think this set does a pretty good job of capturing the beauty of the X-Men Mansion. 
though everything is just a bit squished down to meet the constraints of an official LEGO set. For $330, I really think that LEGO could have included more minifigures. For example, they have 15 more minifigures and 696 more pieces in the Daily Bugle set for only $20 more, and they have multiple dual molded leg figures in that set, which would have worked really well for some of the figures here. That said, I do really like the look of the mansion, and I am super excited that we are finally getting such a large X-Men set, as it is my personal favorite portion of the Marvel franchise. For me personally, I will certainly be looking to pick up this set, but perhaps when it goes on sale. One thing I'm very excited to see is all of the LEGO custom mock makers trying their hand at making a larger scale version of the mansion with the fancy rounded driveway in front and maybe even the basketball court and swimming pool out back. Building a custom X-Men mansion has long been on my list and in fact I started gathering dark orange pieces for it around two years ago. So I might still have to try my hand at a larger custom version to go alongside with my custom Sentinel and X-Men minifigures. Even with this set's release, we are still missing some of the iconic X-Men characters that we desperately need. You can see my versions of these missing characters made from official LEGO parts by clicking on the video on the right. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.